Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Simplify LC Tandem MS Routine Workflow Complexity for General Use by Joe DeBusolo. We're excited to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. To learn more about Thermo Fisher Scientific, please visit www.thermoscientific.com. I am Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that you'll be viewing the presentation in the slide window. To enlarge the window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. Finally, if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window, or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Joe DeBusolo, Senior Scientist of Applications at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Please join me in welcoming Joe DeBusolo. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Thank you, Judy. Hello, this is Joe DeBuslo from Thermo Fisher Scientific, presenting ways to simplify routine workflows using liquid chromatography coupled to tandem mass spectrometry for general clinical use. This presentation was produced by Jason Lai, Product Manager of Regulated Products for Thermo Fisher Scientific's Chromatography and Mass Spectrometry Division. As you probably know, the interest in clinical LCMS publications has increased exponentially over the last few years, which means that more and more clinical laboratories are considering or are already implementing LCMS systems for various applications. This is because LCMS technology offers great flexibility for developing in-house tests to measure clinically relevant compounds, even their metabolites if necessary, with confidence in small volumes of samples. When I say in-house methods, I mean laboratory-developed tests, which the U.S. Food and Drug Administration regulates for in vitro diagnostic use. Those who develop clinical laboratory methods typically start with peer-reviewed articles to help them utilize their instruments, reagents, and other resources to run samples and generate data in order to come up with a reliable procedure to measure specific things in blood, urine, or other biological fluids. They must validate the entire system, which includes the instruments, reagents, consumables, and standard operating procedures, in order to use the test for diagnostic purposes. Let's go over the things that matter to most to clinical laboratory operation, which are the quality of the lab developed test results, the efficiency in generating those results, the turnaround time to report the results, and how much it costs to do all this. The total testing process in clinical laboratories is a patient-focused process. Every bioanalytical test has several critical parts that must be well-defined and accomplished in order to produce a credible final result. There are things that must happen before samples arrive in the laboratory. The highest percentage of errors occurs during this time. Once the laboratory, or once in the laboratory, the samples must be prepared properly. The laboratory is also responsible for properly preparing reagents, instruments, and software to measure what needs to be measured in each sample. The data that is generated must be carefully reviewed and reported. Those who ordered the test must not only receive correct reports, they must understand the manner in which the results are presented in order to properly interpret and act on the results. The second highest percentage of errors occurs during this phase. Interestingly, the processes that occur in the laboratory account for less than half of the total errors that can occur during this whole process.
Each phase of the process takes time. Those of us who work in the laboratory can only address how quickly and efficiency, uh, efficiently things get done there to affect the total turnaround time. We at Thermo Fisher Scientific have been working hard to simplify routine workflows by developing instruments, software, and lab supplies to help you prepare and analyze as many samples as efficiently and economically as possible within the confines of your laboratory resources. We address your concerns for speed, efficiency, and laboratory space restrictions with our compact multi-channel HPLC, TANA mass spectrometry, and software that streamlines workflow. We now offer class one medical devices, the Prelude MD HPLC to perform combined sample cleanup with HPLC within two channels that elute into one mass spectrometer. Then there's the Prelude LX4 MD HPLC, which processes many samples across four channels that elute into one mass spectrometer. The Endura MD triple quadrupole mass spectrometer and ClinQuan MD software, which controls these instruments, processes the data and reports the results as well. So let's take a look under the hood of the Prelude MD HPLC. The Prelude MD instrument is intended to separate drugs or compounds from a sample solution and introduce these separated drugs or compounds to a detector. And it is for in vitro diagnostic use. That's the intended use of this instrument. The Prelude MD utilizes TurboFlow technology for online sample cleanup, which replaces offline solid phase extraction. This is coupled to HPLC or UHPLC, which separates compounds of interest and eludes them to the mass spectrometer. Doing this across two channels greatly increases sample throughput for one laboratory developed tests or permits you to simultaneously run two different tests which utilize the same mass spectrometer. The Prelude MD HPLC combines sample cleanup and HPLC across two channels in a compact modular design with easily accessed columns and solvents. You can run TX methods that utilize TurboFlow online sample cleanup coupled to HPLC, or you can run LX methods that inject samples directly into the HPLC column of either channel. By the way, whenever I say HPLC columns, I mean to include UHPLC. And that's thanks to the fact that our Prelude HPLCs can handle pressures generated by UHPLC columns packed with sub-2 micron particles. Turboflow technology involves patented extraction columns that rapidly remove a great deal of unwanted sample components, such as proteins, salts, and sugars. During the sample loading step, proteins are instantaneously excluded from the pores of the packing material. Of the molecules that enter the pores, only those that have an affinity to the surface chemistry are retained while others are quickly eluted to waste. We then change the mobile phase to elute the analytes of interest to the HPLC column. Any sample components that remain in the turboflow column after this transfer step get washed away while the analytes of interest undergo a final separation in the HPLC column and eventually get eluded to the mass spectrometer. Whenever we add sample cleanup to an LC separation method, the total runtime increases, but not the data window. The mass spectrometer sits there waiting for the next data window. If the data window is half of the total runtime, then staggering injections into two channels will double the sample throughput and maximize the use of the mass spectrometer. This multi-channeling strategy 
works with any method that elute the analytes of interest within a fraction of the total runtime, and that includes LX methods that don't utilize TurboFlow sample cleanup. Cross-sequential operation maximizes the use of the mass specs time, which a conventional HPLC cannot do. Here is an example of analyzing urine specimens for benzodiazepines in one channel of the Prelude MDHPLC, while the other channel analyzes the same sample for opiates. By multi-channeling across two channels, we are able to analyze two urine specimens for benzos and opiates in just 13 minutes. That amounts to 18 injections per hour in total, and that's nine benzos and nine opiates. The Prelude MD-HPLC allows you to choose between TX mode, which utilizes TurboFlow sample cleanup prior to the final separation. The auto sampler injects the sample into the loading pump's flow to the TurboFlow column. In LX mode, the auto sampler injects the sample directly into the eluting pump's flow of the HPLC column. This summary gives you an idea of how much solvent is used in TX mode versus LX mode. The TurboFlow technique typically uses three solvents from the loading pumps. Solvent C washes the TurboFlow column so that it can be ready for the next injection. The final separation of alprazolam by the AccuCore column under control of the eluding pumps involves a similar amount of solvents as the reserpine and chloramphenicol separation accomplished in LX mode. In either mode, the solvent consumption is low. Here are the two LC methods that control loading and eluding pumps, as well as valves A and B to accomplish TX and LX separations. The blue fields show the loading pump conditions, and the pink fields show the eluding pump conditions. Notice that for LX mode, the loading pumps are set to zero flow. The LX mode does not utilize different valve positions as does the TX mode which directs the flows from loading and eluding pumps to accomplish sample cleanup, transfer of analytes from TurboFlow to analytical columns, washing, and equilibrating the columns. Also notice the total run times and data windows of each method. In the uh, Alprazolom uh, TX method, we start collecting data 1.6 minutes after the injection and collect data for two minutes. In the LX method for reserpine and chloramphenicol, we have a one minute data window that starts 1.4 minutes after the injection. Other parts of the Prelude MD HPLC control include auto sampler parameters, temperature control of the columns, and pump pre-start settings. Since the Prelude MD HPLC uses positive displacement pumps rather than reciprocating pumps, as conventional HPLC does, there is no flow through the columns after the completion of the LC method. The pumps quickly refill, and just before the next injection, the pumps pressurize with solvent conditions specified at the beginning of the LC method. This way, we get reproducible chromatographic peak shapes and retention times while saving a tremendous amount of solvents. One of the best features of our software is that it records pressure traces for each injection. This helps us troubleshoot any problems with the pumps, columns, or plumbing. The TX mode pressure traces show both loading and eluding profiles for each channel, the pressure chases uh, from both channels are overlaid at the top. Notice that both channels are virtually identical. The LX mode pressure traces are very similar for both channels. 
This data shows how reproducible the retention times were from the TurboFlow LCMS method for alprazolam over 2,000 injections during the course of 100 hours. And you can see a very good reproducibility of uh, retention times. Retention times for reserpine and chloramphenicol peaks from the LX method were also very precise. Since many of our customers have already invested in automated systems that do sample cleanup, and many have applications where simple dilute and shoot sample preparation is all they need, they still want to multi-channel their LCMS methods across as many channels as possible to maximize sample throughput. So we replaced the TX plumbing with LX plumbing and now have the Prelude LX4 MD HPLC, which is capable of quadrupling sample throughput. The Prelude LX4 MD HPLC is intended to separate drugs or compounds from a sample solution and introduce these separated drugs or compounds into a detector. It is for in vitro diagnostic use. The Prelude LX4 MD HPLC has four parallel channels which can run identical or different methods simultaneously. Cross sequential optimization maximizes the utilization of the mass spectrometer. If all channels run methods that have a total runtime of four minutes and data windows less than one minute, then a throughput of almost 60 injections per hour can be achieved. In other words, the Prelude LX4 MD HPLC staggers injections across all four channels almost every minute under these conditions. The Prelude LX4 MD HPLC has a footprint similar to that of the Prelude MD HPLC. Rather than two channels that can do either TX or LX modes, our LX4 version runs HPLC methods on all four channels. Each channel can run identical or different methods that elute analytes into a common mass spectrometer's ion source. Here we see what the Endura MD mass spectrometer sees as it keeps up with each channel of the Prelude LX4 MD HPLC running different methods across all four of its channels. In this case, the entire system achieves a throughput of about 22 injections per hour. Each channel has its own unique HPLC column and mobile phases, as well as unique data acquisition parameters for the mass spec. However, each method must have the same ion source temperatures so that there is no delay when switching between channels. The economic advantage of multi-channeling systems is obvious. Rather than make a huge capital investment for four individual LCMS systems, which take up a lot of space and resources, you can make a smaller investment for a single Prelude LX4 MDHPLC and Endura MD mass spectrometer. This bundle fits in a space that would take up uh, that would be taken up by a single LCMS system and uses the uh, electrical connections, nitrogen gas, and argon gas of a single LCMS system. Yet, the Prelude LX4 Endura bundle can handle four times the workload of a single LCMS system. Each channel produces results for individual analytes as we run four different methods simultaneously on the Prelude LX4 MD HPLC with Endura MD mass spectrometer. We typically get precisions less than 5% RSD with these performance tests that you see here. Running the same method across all four channels over a 24-hour period typically produces data showing that all four channels are virtually identical. These data also show how the Endura MD mass spectrometer 
kept up with the workload and produce precise data ca uh, area counts for each analyte. That brings us to an overview of the Endura MD tandem mass spectrometer. The Endura MD instrument is intended to identify and quantify inorganic and organic compounds in human specimens. This is for in vitro diagnostic use. The Endura MD is a triple quadrupole mass spectrometer designed to reliably identify and quantify various analytes from various samples that have been processed by various chromatographic and sample cleanup strategies in order to minimize sample matrix interferences. When coupled to optimized sample cleanup and chromatographic processes, the Endor MD mass spectrometer provides accurate and reliable quantitation over a wide range of sample sizes and concentrations. The advanced design of the Endor MD mass spectrometer allows fast selected reaction monitoring, or SRM, transitions from precursor to product ions. I'll talk more about this a little bit later. It can record up to 300 SRM transitions per second in either positive or negative ion modes using either heated electrospray ionization or atmospheric pressure chemical ionization sources. The Endor MD mass spectrometer comes with a syringe pump to make infusions and a valve to do flow injection analysis or divert waste away from the ion source. The curved shape of the high performance quadrupole used for the collision cell between the first and third quadrupoles contributes to the compact design of the Endura MD mass spectrometer. The ion source housing permits us to easily switch between our heated electrospray ionization, or HESI probe, and atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, or APCI probe. The sensitivity of any mass spectrometer is a function of how many analyte ions are formed in the ionization source and how many of those ions get introduced into the mass analyzers while excluding interfering ions and neutral compounds. The RF lens, multipole, and neutral beam blocker are optimized to transmit the ionized analytes of interest into the mass, uh, the mass analyzers as efficiently as possible while preventing interfering components from entering. The first and third quadrupoles, Q1 and Q3, of the Endura MD mass spectrometer are linear. The second quadrupole, Q2, is curved and is used to induce collisions of our analyte ions with argon or nitrogen gas to produce fragments. A typical selected reaction monitoring event involves isolating uh, individual analyte ions, which we call precursor ions, by Q1 according to their mass to charge ratios. The precursor ions are transmitted to Q2 where they are fragmented into product ions. Q3 then isolates each population of fragment ions according to their mass to charge ratios and sends them to the detector to get counted. Each SRM event occurs very quickly in the Endura MD mass spectrometer as it can perform up to 300 SRM events per second. The mass calibration of the Endura MD is accomplished by infusing a calibration solution of analytes with positive and negative mass to charge values that you see here. The control software of the Endura MD mass spectrometer does the calibration automatically. The HESI probe is capable of positive ion mode, negative ion mode, or fast polarity switching between positive and negative ions. And these types of scans are programmed in the data acquisition portion of the software. Electrospray ionization is used most often for analytes that are thermally libile and for analytes that are already ionized. 
The APCI probe is most often used for analytes that are not already ionized, such as most steroids, and those that can survive high temperature vaporization without decomposing, such as uh, by dehydration. APCI also operates in positive and negative ion modes or fast polarity switching. Recall the TX method for alprazolam our, our that we went over several slides ago. You saw how reproducible the retention times were across the two channels of the Prelude MD HPLC among 2,000 injections. Here we see the precision concentration measurements made from those injections. An analytical range from 1 to 100 nanograms per ml is shown here as an example of how a calibration curve looks. And one can determine which fit, linear or quadratic, and which data weighting, such as uh, 1 over x, would provide the most accurate quantitation. In order to qualify a chromatographic peak to be quantitated, we need some assurance that the peak is pure. We typically measure at least two SRM transitions for each analyte, one for quantitation and one for confirmation. The processing portion of our software automatically calculates an ion ratio of the two transitions for each eluding analyte. Here we see the precision of measuring ion ratios for the quality control samples among 2,000 injections across across both channels of the Prelude MD HPLC. Many applications require switching between positive and negative ion SRMs. We tested three Endora MD mass spectrometers with HESI probes, each connected to a Prelude MD HPLC by running the LX method for reserpine and chloramphenicol. On each channel of each unit, we ran four batches, which specified five replicate injections of test samples along with calibrators. For reserpine, we monitor positive ion transitions that are shown here. And for chloramphenicol, we monitor negative ion transitions that we see here. The respective calibrators with internal standards were used to construct the calibration plots that you see here and calculate concentrations in our test samples. From 120 replicate injections of the test samples, we demonstrated reproducible results for both reserping at 1 nanogram per ml and chloramphenicol at 10 nanograms per ml. After demonstrating reproducible quantitation of positive and negative analytes from replicate injections using the heated electrospray ionization or HESI probe among three different Endura MD mass spectrometers, we switched ionization sources. I mentioned earlier that atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, or APCI, is most often used for analytes that are not already ionized, such as many steroids, as long as they are thermally stable at the temperatures used in the mass spectrometer's ion source. Using testosterone as our test analyte for positive ion transitions that you see here, and uh, estradiol, with uh, negative ion transitions that you see here, we were able to demonstrate reproducible quantitation of each in our test samples. Testosterone at 30 nanograms per ml and estradiol at 60 nanograms per ml showed RSDs of less than 4% and less than 8% respectively. The Prelude MD HPLC and Endura MD mass spectrometer are operated using Quinquan MD software, version 1.0. 
The ClinQuan MD data processing software is intended for storing, retrieving, and processing laboratory data from the Endura MD mass spectrometer and Prelude MD HPLC instruments. The ClinQuan MD software is intended for in vitro diagnostic use. ClinQuan MD software streamlines the workflows for LCMS applications in clinical laboratories. It features security functions which allow lab directors to set permission levels as required by the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment, or CLIA, of 1988. ClinQuan MD software maintains audit trails to simplify record keeping and ensure the integrity of the results. ClinQuan MD software provides default permission settings for three levels, lab directors, supervisors, and technicians, in order to comply with CLIA requirements. In addition, it provides flexibility in naming additional roles and assigning responsibilities for everyone who will use the system. Roles and responsibilities are defined by the lab director in the administrative console portion of the ClinQuan MD software. The lab director also keeps track of audit trails. Here is an example of permissions set for technicians. The lab director can easily permit or prevent access to various parts of the software for all users. The lab director can also name and manage custom levels of roles and responsibilities to accommodate every user, even service engineers. From the technician's point of view, ClinQuan MD software is easy to use. The technician can select predefined batch templates with validated methods, complete the sample list, even using a barcode reader, and start running samples, all with just a few mouse clicks. The technician can either select a predefined batch template that already has a validated method associated with it, or create a batch from scratch. In this case, a validated method is being selected. Next, the technician builds the work list either manually with the help of a barcode reader, or by importing a text file that was created offline. The technician can specify the batch to run over one or more HPLC, column, uh, HPLC channels, as you see here. After the batch is completed and checked, the technician can run the batch. The supervisor can log into ClinQuan MD software to view chromatograms as they run, review calibration, and QC results as soon as they are available and review test results for the specimens. At the successful completion of the batch, the supervisor approves the results and files the batch reports. ClinQuan MD software presents batch results with status flags to alert the supervisor of any issues with the final results for each injection. Analyte peaks as well as their respective internal standard peaks, must pass specifications for retention times, areas, symmetry, and ion ratios in order to assure their identities and purities. Calibration plots must pass specifications for regression statistics, precision, and accuracy. QC results must pass specifications for precision and accuracy. And these specifications are defined by the lab director and written into the test method. The supervisor can easily spot any result that is in question and repeat injections or determine if any specimen exceeds the limits of the calibrators and needs to be diluted before reinjection. Once the supervisor is satisfied with the quality of the data, the batch reports can be generated and filed. From instrument startup to final reports, ClinQuan MD software streamlines the entire workflow with flexibility and ease of use. 
In summary, to simplify routine workflows involving LCMS for general clinical use and address your concerns for speed, efficiency, and laboratory space restrictions, we offer compact multi-channel HPLC, TANA mass spectrometry, and software approved as class one medical devices. Our instruments, software, and lab supplies can help you prepare and analyze many samples as efficiently and economically as possible. On behalf of Jason Lai and our colleagues at Thermo Fisher Scientific, I thank you for your participation in this webinar. Jason and I will now be glad to answer any questions you may have about this presentation. If you have a question you'd like to ask Joe, please do so now. We also have Jason Lai, Thermo Scientific's Regulated Product Manager of LSMS Prediagnostics and Research, IVD Toxicology Department of Chromatography and Mass Spectrometry Division on the call to answer any technical questions. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on your screen, and click on the Send button. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Okay, let's get started. Our first question is, will you provide user training online? Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, usually when we uh, provide training, there are three parts. So first we'll have the on-site training, and uh, our trainer will be on-site to show uh, the user how to use the instrument, and then we'll have follow-up visits to make sure uh, the user, they can uh, run the instrument or they have any questions, and uh, all the training material and slides will be provided to the user in addition the online training module will be provided for uh, the user to remind them if they need to go back to look at some of the modules. Overall, uh, the training is a standardized uh, course, so we emphasize on the on-site training. In Prelude MD, can you run one channel with LX mode and the other channel with TX mode? Uh, yes, that's the beauty of the Peru MD, and uh, it provides the flexibility. So one channel you can run LX mode, and the other channel you can run uh, Turbo Pro mode. Or you could run, run both LX mode or run run post uh, table flow. Okay, can you run the same sample set with two different test methods? Yes, uh, in one of the slides of which we show, if you use some example methods for OPS and uh, uh, and, and the depression, uh, you can see uh, they all come in from the same sample and it could prepare for two spacemen, and uh, you can do that. Can LIMS interact directly with ClinQuan MD? Currently, uh, the first uh, version, uh, there's no direct link, but uh, we can uh, use uh, export or import the file into the ClinQuan MD. And when you mean ion ratios, is it analyte area ratio of both transitions? Uh, yes, it's, uh, for example, uh, if you look at some of the earlier slides, when they mentioned the ion ratio, it is uh, the ratio of the confirming ion to the uh, quantitation ion, and they are using the peak area to get the ratio. All right. Um, it looks like we have time for one more question. So it is, 
what are these flow rates again? Sorry if I missed that. Uh, Joe, can you answer that question? Yeah, the uh, <coughs> Prelude MD HPLC, as well as the uh, LX4 version, is capable of uh, going from uh, 10 microliters a minute up to 2 milliliters per minute. Okay. I would like to once again thank Joe DiBusolo for his presentation. Joe, do you have any final comments you'd like to share? Well, I uh, appreciate everyone's participation in this uh, presentation, and there are additional uh, questions that uh, we don't have time to answer uh, live, uh, but we will certainly get your contact information and uh, do our best to answer your questions offline. Okay, well, thank you once again, Joe. I would also like to thank our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing for six months from today's live event, which will be December 30th, 2015. You'll receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.